The floor spacing and defense for the Lakers in the post-Westbrook era has been night and day better. While Russ said win, lose, or draw, have fun, AR-15's more about killing his opponents on the court, saying post-game against Phoenix, quote, win, just win at all costs, end quote. Since the All-Star break, after a 15-game sample size, LA owns the number two ranked defensive rating, just .3 behind the Milwaukee Bucks. Also since then, LA set their franchise record for threes and a half, coming three triples shy of breaking the NBA record. Even with LeBron updating us himself via Twitter, there was no evaluation on his ankle, there's still a level of comfort amidst LA's remaining personnel that they can still get the job done without him. Nevertheless, envisioning the full-strength lineup of James, Davis, Vanderbilt, Russell, and Reeves can't help but strike fear into any Western Conference opponent. We are talking about a James and Davis duo that captured franchise title number 17 nearly three years ago. In the absence of LeBron, Rui Hachimura has been absolute money from the mid-range. Since being traded away from Washington, the Japanese sensation is making 60% of his shots from 16 to 22 feet away from the hoop in 26 outings. Before the Lakers' last game against OKC, Hillbilly Kobe became the first Laker guard, fittingly since the late great Kobe, to make 53 foul shots over a four-game span. Reeves is the best foul drawer we've seen since James Harden most likely, with his ability to get defenses out of position on the drive and fluidly embrace the contact. Meanwhile, before he suffered a hip injury to start his second tenure with the franchise, D'Angelo Russell had been in his bag. It's really a great story how D'Lo started his career with this team, was traded away, and now has become a completely different player. Fans in Los Angeles are witnessing their guy make a full circle journey in real time. Since D'Lo's lone year at Ohio State, he's always been a pristinely effective shot creator, but the development he's made has been pretty incredible since he played next to Kobe in his first couple of years. Russell has established himself as the most efficient three-point shooter off the dribble outside of Stephen Curry and Damian Lillard. Steph leads the league in three-point percentage among players taking at least seven threes per night. With Dame's reputation as a three-point revolutionizing talent plus the fact that he's attempting the most threes per game of anyone in 22-23, you can't dismiss Mr. Lillard either. Other than those two, no one is more lethal off the bounce from the perimeter than D'Angelo. Maybe Clay Thompson, but we're talking strictly off the dribble. D loading is just six spots behind Steph for the highest three point percentage among players attempting at least seven threes on average. That's most impressive when you consider D loading's shot frequency on off the dribble threes is extremely high. 23.1% of his overall looks come on pull ups from distance. Even that volume of deep range shots, whether he's making them or not, has been a breath of fresh air for Laker fans. While the previous Russell and Brody was making highlight reels one after the other with similar shots to the ones D'Angelo's making look easy, being missed in meme-worthy fashion, D'Angelo has fluidity and confidence to his game beyond the perimeter. Against the Suns, D'Lo combined with Anthony Davis and Austin Reeves to post 78 points, 22 dimes, and outscore Phoenix by 44 when he was on the court. Speaking to his unselfishness, D'Angelo leads all non-centers and is third among all NBA players this season in total passes made, only trailing Nikola Jokic and DeMontis Sabonis. Let's quickly enter the film room with Russell, which first features his increasing chemistry with Anthony Davis. Back-to-back -back possessions featuring weak side screening actions take place. This first is a handoff into a screen where D'Lo threads a one-handed bouncer through Biombo then Davis gathers and sweeps through for the contested fade. Second screening action on the weak side is your classic semi-transition pick and roll. After a dicey hesitation combo that's loading, Jacques Londale guesses wrong that it's going to be yet another bounce pass. D'Lo's body language elusively sells that before he spots Davis with instead the lob. Darwin was going ham with these weak side screen and rolls between Davis and Russell. This time, leading to that offense is a screen-the-screener action between Russell and Troy Brown Jr., and D'Lo swings it to AR for the splashdown. It's that type of spacing that was pretty much unheard of for this Laker team before D'Angelo got here. On the next play, 
Following the three consecutive dimes you just saw, Phoenix naturally leaves D'Lo open after Dennis the Menace collapses the defense and kicks it out. Despite Phoenix adjusting their coverage to guard D'Lo for the score instead of the pass next time, he unpredictably then goes right back to setting up AD, this time out of a pick and pop. How about some D-loading lateral quickness and timing as he chases down T. Ross for the block, and another former Raptor in Biombo breaks the layup. Here he just pressures D. Book and takes his cookies. Next defensive stance you can see D'Angelo is going to perfectly stunt off Josh Kogi as Booker tries to draw the foul, helping force the brick after grabbing the board and pushing the tempo. Watch how this nasty hesitation at the arc to bait both Akogi and Booker into thinking it's a pull-up opens up the lane. That's Curry and Dame type gravity drawing. Reeves gets trapped in this action with Vanderbilt, but a nifty floater pass from Austin to Jared gets the attention of CP3, who's slow to rotate back to Russell even after the initial kickout goes to TBJ. Again, Akogi's drawn to D'Lo like a magnet on this kickout. allowing D'Lo to get the swing pass in the corner and merely up fake then sweep through to his strong hand for the first step and finish. His mix of quickness and ability to awarely collapse the pressure after baiting defenders with his shooting makes bursts of speed like that one look easy. This next play goes back to highlighting Russell's complete willingness to set up his teammates and space out, regardless of if it seems like an assist is available. You can tell he's not rushing Davis at all with his body language and really squaring up his pass, attempting to make it as accurate as possible, resulting in him finding the perfect angle for the entry, then that leads to a beastly drop step from AD. The next Hezzy in transition from D'Lo isn't even the most elusive, but it works to again display the overwhelming amount of attention he's able to draw beyond the perimeter. All he does on the Hezzy cross is fake with his body language a little bit that he's about to release the triple, but that's still enough to get a wide open lane. Whether it's one of three things, firstly, D'Angelo's ability to simply catch and shoot, secondly, his instinctiveness to let the game come to him, and thirdly, his polished wherewithal and finesse to create space for himself in the lane, he's simply a much better fit than Russ for this specific Laker offense. Those are all qualities from D'Lo that are resembling some of the greatest guards of this generation right now. I look forward to see what's in store for this hardworking phenom out of Ohio State in the coming months. Whatever your main team is, however, everyone in the basketball world right now has had their eyes squarely focused on Austin Powers Reeves, a guy who significantly eases the pressure off D-loading. Despite causing saltiness from his opponents, shout out Devin Booker, Austin Reeves may be the best foul-drawing merchant to have ever rocked the purple and gold. Before the OKC win, with 58 free throw attempts over his previous five games, that was more than Booker, Harden, Kyrie, Luka, and LeBron over that span. The fan favorites receiving satirical MVP chants that some are starting to question the legitimacy of, as AR-15 is a weapon that's murdering the aura of his opponents on what's becoming a nightly basis. Going under the radar amidst the attention drawn by AR, trading Kendrick Nunn and three second rounders to receive a top 10 pick from 2019's draft in Rui Hachimura has taken the Lakers' wing depth to a whole different level. With GM god Rob Palinka then trading for Beasley and Vanderbilt a few weeks after that, freight train all-time great LeBron James will have the adequate support to keep him fresh for when it matters most. The most recent New Orleans Pelicans-esque performance from Anthony Davis also leads you to believe that King James will have all the necessary support in the superstar department. The Browse 37 piece just reminded us that this Laker team isn't anything close to a championship contender without him. The depth in the backcourt from this team is also there, with two non-over-dribbling productive creators in Dennis Schroeder, Malik Beasley, and Lonnie Walker. Those three just showed us they can be driving factors who can win you a playoff game. Dennis had 21 in his 48th start of the year. The back in the rotation, Lonnie hit four threes, scoring 20 points in 24 minutes, and Malik chipped in 10 points, being a game high, plus 13. 
From three role players, that production means absolutely everything because without both depth and players staying within their roles, the championship DNA for a team just can't be there. We all play a role in this life, and it isn't different when it comes to basketball. Which player is the Lakers' X Factor? Story is yours in Community Speaks, so leave your take on today's question. The two shoutout winners from my last two uploads are on your screen.